Okay, we are now at the point in our build where we have some gaps um, and we need to fill them. And as you can see, they tend to come to a point um, and then they're wider than the thickness of a plank at one end. Uh, and the process of filling that is to fill them with something called steelers, which are basically little wedge-shaped pieces of wood. Now, uh, if you read books on how to plank ship hulls, there's all sorts of different techniques for doing it and some authors will tell you that there's right ways and wrong ways. And to be quite honest, at this stage, because we're doing the first planking and none of this is going to be visible, all we're trying to do is create a surface that will be smooth and the correct shape for the second planking, which is presented. So we don't need to worry and there isn't really a right way and a wrong way as long as you fill the gap. So you could, if you wanted to, for example, choose to fill the gap with some of your leftover pieces and have uh, several little small wedges and then keep backfilling. You could do that. Um, it doesn't look particularly attractive, but that is of no importance whatsoever at this stage. And it's a good way of using up your... Um, off-cut material uh, and saving some planks um, as virgin planks for um, other other jobs in the build possibly um, or or in your spares um, so you can do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my way of doing it um, which helps um, keep your planks no no narrower than two and a half millimeters at the end. So I personally try not to go more than half of the thickness of a plank, just because they start getting weak after that, uh, more likely to um, split and, and so on. Um, but we can't get past the fact that we have um, a, a thin, narrow gap that goes all the way up to this point here. So let me show you how I go about it. So what we need to start with is to work out where this plank is going to end. Um, so rather than cutting a whole new plank, we are going to use our offcuts. And what I do is I take an offcut plank and I go in to the point where it is the gap is the thickness of one plank. And we mark that out. So what we plan to do is cut a piece that will fit into there and goes up to that point there. Then from behind that, we can then taper uh, a plank to two and a half millimeters and put it in there and then put another one in there. And that will probably not quite fill the whole of that expanse. We'll probably two and a bit here. If it fills it, that's brilliant. If not, we'll have a, a look at what we need to do to fill that end. Next, we need to find an off cut that is the right length or longer, as this one is, to the gap we need to fill. So going from the start, we need to get to that point there. So I now need to do a taper that goes from that point there that we've marked out to that corner there. And we're just going to cut that off and that should hopefully fit okay. Uh, what I tend to do when I cut them is I cut them a bit um, wider than we've marked out and that way I can then um, sand it to shape. So where we've marked out the um, end point of our plank should be, I'm just marking that onto our outside uh, of the strips so that we can see where this should be lined up to. So this is the um, first pass at cutting this steeler. And you can see I'm considerably longer 
because I'm a bit too wide at this end. So I'm just going to sand this down a little bit and then we'll keep test fitting until it fits into that gap. Okay, so I now have my steeler cut to shape. It goes almost all the way up, not too worried about the very end. We can fill that with a little bit of the wood glue. So we put plenty of glue in and then what we're going to do is we're just going to place it in as far up as we can, push the plank into place and then just push it up into the gap and get it as tight as we can. There you go, that's up to the mark that we made. And we've filled that nicely. Remove any excess glue because that's going to get in the way of us fitting the next planks. There we go. No need to nail that. It's in there tightly and we've got plenty of glue in there. So it's being bonded to this piece of board and it's being bonded to each of the, of the planks. So we can now take another off cut that is um, longer and I'll mark it out. Use this nice flat edge mark out how, how long to be so we've marked that up i'm going to mark measure up two and a half millimeters on this end and we'll cut the piece uh, the strip from that point to our two and a half millimeter measured point and create a little wedge so we can place that one in the top so i've cut our upper plank as you can see there um, so we're at two and a half millimetres at that end, and we can just lie that in flat, test fit it. That looks good. I'm going to mark off a point where we're going to cut it, which will be there. We can just nip that end off. Just double check we've not done something silly, because that happens sometimes. There we go, that's okay, and we can just simply glue that in now. I'm just marking the bottom point. You can see that what I've done is just put a little bit of glue really um, against the plank above it because um, as we put it in it's all going to squash out anyway and as always get rid of any excess glue Okay, so we can now put another plank in underneath that. Now this time we're going to do it slightly different. Rather than measuring two and a half, we're going to actually mark out the gap because with cutting it, it might be slightly under, slightly over. So it just makes more sense to put the plank against the straight edge, the, the edge that you know is straight, and mark up where that Gap is and you can see we're going to have a small gap just here so I need to mark off where that gap starts because that's actually the point where our taper starts okay so we're going to taper from the point we've marked to there um, and then... okay we can then mark off where we want to trim the plank Nip that off as we did before. And 
and we can glue that in in the same way as we've done previously and then we'll have a small gap to fill which we'll come back to um, in a moment. So this time we're going to glue the whole of this surface Drop our plank in. And then on this point here, I'm going to take where we've got a little bit of a gap. I'm going to take a bit of an off cut from a previous taper and just ram that into the gap. which will fill that gap nicely and we don't have to worry about trimming or cutting anything because we're just using off cut basically and that fills our gap nicely um, it looks presentable it's going to be easy for sanding um, we've not created too much work for ourselves with unevenness um, so yeah I'm quite happy with that that's how I go around filling uh, my gaps with steelers. Okay, so we have now finished our first planking of the main hull. Uh, now we haven't finished doing all of it because we've still got the gallery to do. We'll talk about that in a moment. But what we have done is completed putting our planking strips um, across here. Now, um, it doesn't look particularly attractive at this point. We've got all the planks in that we need, and we've got our um, tapered planks, which has helped us keep um, complete strips, and we've got some steelers in, and we've, we've talked about how we do that. The next job is to get this to be tidy and the correct shape so we're gonna probably gonna need to do a little bit of filling and we'll talk about that when we get to it but the first job is to do some initial tidy up particularly at this end here um, and get this ready for um, accepting the um, accepting the uh, uh, piece of wood at the stern there um, that will end up hanging the rudder off we need to get this right for accepting the false keel uh, and we need to sort this out, ready for putting in the um, start of the bow, sp uh, bow sprite support and, and what have you. So, um, we have a slightly uneven finish. We're going to sand all of this so it's nice and smooth. We're going to correct the shape. Where we've got, um, like we have here, where we've got a plank that sticks out, uh, we're going to sand it down and we've got some more um, planks that we'll have to put in just to fill some gaps um, and then we'll probably put a little bit of filler in make it all smooth again we have to take our time because what we do on the outside of this is what we permanently see so this has to be right uh, once we've done this the rest of the rest of the ship is a breeze for me this is the most labor intensive part of it. Um, we've got to blend everything in so it's nice and smooth, flows naturally, looks right. So my first job is actually going to be tidying up this edge and this edge. Just going to start by trimming off any long pieces. Okay, so that's got most of it off. Now we've got these two bits that flare up here uh, and that's not correct. So we might have to put something in there. And then we've got one that twisted out here that prized itself back. So we've got to shape that. So um, now we've, and we've also got to straighten this edge 
ready for putting planks along the gallery uh, and we actually have a gallery former to put on um, but we'll do that in a moment so uh, the next thing is to do the same with the bow so I'll get on with that and come back to you when we're ready for some more time. What normally happens when you watch a video is they go from putting these planks on and showing you how they're doing it to snap and it's all finished and it's all been sanded back. They don't show you how bad it looks beforehand. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best person in the world at making model ships. I've, I've glued a little bit of wood in there on top where one of my steelers went, sank itself in. So it's not perfect, but often they're not. And if you know what you're looking for, you can see that it's not on others. But when we've finished sanding it, it will look fine. So that's trimmed. What I want to do now is start filing this back. And we're going to use our perme perme grip tools again. Um, don't be tempted to use something like this. Um, because my experience is you go too far, you put little undulations in, and you actually create work for yourself or even even could ruin it. Um, these little circular saws, however, can be quite handy for chopping off some of these longer bits if you don't want to use an old pair of cutters. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a fine square and just go along the keel and make sure that we are flat particularly at this point particularly at this point here where we've got a bit of a flare out where we had a start of the twist we're going to have to shape that because ultimately we want this to go in to the uh, keel and not be too far up it So we need to make sure that this is not higher than this. And the same all the way along. This one's slightly under, so we'll have to backfill with some wood, but this is slightly higher. to take the surface off there means that we are leveling this down to it so that's a good good gauge of getting this the right height and then we can start taking out any lumps and bumps that we've got and getting, getting roughly it all even. Okay, I'm gonna follow this around now, following the shape uh, of the uh, false keel all the way around. about getting this bit shaped afterwards what we're doing is getting all this trimmed back down to this piece
So you can see with the right tools, it's actually quite a quick job without having to use any power tools. And periodically give it a bit of a hoover to keep the dust down. Now here where it's uh, we've got quite a bit of material to take away, I've got to move to a coarse perma grip which will allow me to take out uh, more material more quickly. So you can see that putting the profile in, reducing the material down to get the curve correct, actually widens the front. So we're going to have to thin all of this down and taper this in and blend it all in. We're also going to have to deal with that because we've got that slightly wrong. We need to open up the hole there, but at least level it for now. So I'm going to go around and get rid of all these little raised areas um, and then I'll come back to you when we're at the stern. So we're at the stern now and the same principle we want to follow the line. Um, I've just roughed it and we're going to use the final one now and just finish that off and get it all nice and level. And then when we've got these raised little flares, I'm using this because it's easy for making um, nice gradual curves. Um, and we're going to take it back using this. And then as we shape this, um, we can start levelling it and then anything that's overhanging here, let me turn this the right way around for you, anything that's overhanging in there, we can just cut off. So I'm going to go in with a little saw and uh, cut that off and we've got a, a repair to make there. I'm going to take that off and we'll make a repair. Um, but yeah, we can go in and just probably actually do that with a chisel, just straighten it up. So again, making it flat with the kit part, we can go in and sand that in a moment. So I use these coarse nail files to get in for these little small areas, they're quite handy. Too coarse to use on plastic, but fine for this. And they're cheap, so pack a 10 for a couple of quid.
too. We will we'll use proper sanding paper to finish this when we're ready. Right, I'll carry on putting the shape into that. Okay, we've done the sort of basic shaping um, and, the, and the rough uh, filing back um, with the permagrit tools. Um, with, with that completed, we next go to um, a process of doing some sanding. Um, and I'm gonna start with um, a 180 um, grit, and I like to use uh, a wooden block. Um, you can get all sorts of um, sanding blocks. I use the wooden block. Um, this one's got um, rounded edges and um, a 90 degrees edge as well. And I find that can be useful for, for different tasks. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start taking this back um, and getting the basic uh, shape right. And then we'll reduce the grit uh, and make it nice and smooth. So... Um, what we want to do is be mindful of the shape and not misshape anything, but just get everything to flow. So we've got the basic shape from the rib formers, and we don't want to lose that, basically. So I tend to start from the middle um, of the ship um, and move out, because that is always your most even area of planking. It's the bit that goes down the easiest. Um, it, it's the bow and the stern that is going to give you your your um, issues in in terms of being not as smooth. So um, yeah, we can just simply start sanding this out now. And as we do that, we're taking back any lumps of glue and things like that. And we want to blend it into the gun port pattern there and make sure that we've got a seamless, smooth um, join there so that we've not got anything that's going to cause the second planking uh, to be uneven in any way. And that's already starting to make a big difference to the look of how this is coming together. And ultimately, what we're looking for is for there to be no difference in each of these planks. They're all the same level. When you run your fingers across it, it's totally smooth. And it needs to be like that, the full length of the ship so it's a little time consuming so forgive me if we don't video it all um, so I'll just crack on with this now Thank you. 